so it just gets better every day so I'm trying to bring this 14 Silverado in the shop to put the steering gear in it and I go to bring it in and the battery is stone dead I did drive it out now I think I've got the power steering gear unplugged as soon as I hooked the battery cables up to the booster the horn started blowing and the high beams are on and the four ways are flashing I pulled the horn fuse out this one here is the horn fuse but if I put it back in it's gonna blow and I thought I could just drive it in now I tried using the locks to unlock the doors but the key fob I don't believe is working and starting the vehicle didn't work and I can't turn the steering it is freaking seized Well, that's the other thing, the washer and wipers come on. If you're stealing the car, you're going to be clean at least. Maybe I'll try plugging in that steering gear. I know I got the network interrupted by disconnecting it, but I did drive it out. I backed it up here and the wheels aren't straight, so I can't drive it in. So I climbed underneath the vehicle and I did plug the power steering gear back in again. So I'm going to do a scan of this thing and see if there's any codes that I can clear. Still got network communication. What blows me away is I can't turn the steering wheel. Brake booster, large vacuum leak. Invalid data received from body control module. Low voltage, serial bus. Unless the water in that steering gear is causing a network communication issue now. I can't even move this thing now. Well, as soon as it finishes this network scan, I'm going to clear all codes read by code scan. And it's about to start raining. Normally, to disable the alarm system, you use the key fob to lock or unlock the door, but the key fob doesn't work and, or turn the ignition on. Let's do another scan now and see what... Invalid data received from body control module. I got the steering gear plugged in. I might have to get a floor jack out here and try and jack it up and get underneath it a little better. Maybe I'll try disconnecting the battery. Oh, brother. So I managed to get it to steer, but I had to reef on the steering wheel really hard and then it started to turn. So I'm hoping that this problem is caused by network communication interruption in the steering gear. We'll see. So I did plug this network wiring. This, this bottom connector has uh, eight network wires, I believe, and one serial data wake up wire and then the power and ground and this is from the steering angle sensor 
So I did plug it in, but I suspect that just sitting for a few days while we were waiting for the steering gear has caused the motor to rust up. There's water in here. If you put your finger in here. It's up to about that level because of this tie rod boot and going in the lake. And you can see the rust on the inner rack. So how does this gear come out of here? Looks like it'll come out. I'm going to disconnect the steering column. Pinch bolt up there. Well, I've got the battery disconnected and a battery charger on the battery it was at six volts. So this is the one I got from Napa. It was the only one available. It took four or five days to get it. I'm comparing them and there. The steering rack is centered. It comes with the wiring harness from the, this harness comes with it. That goes from the uh, torque angle sensor in the top of the, in, up in here. So you don't need to take that harness off. Um, you can take it out with the tie rods on, but I elected to take them off because I got to transfer them anyways. Uh, they don't have play in them, so they're good. I'm going to measure the distance from the end of the tie rod, inner tie rod to the nut. I just cracked the nuts loose and threaded the tie rods off. So I'm going to put them on in the same spot. It obviously has to go for a wheel alignment. And this has to be flash programmed to the truck, so it's not plug and play. So there's the replacement gear reinstalled. These left side bolts are 162 foot pounds. <laughs> The right side bolts are 74 foot-pounds and that pinch bolt, which I've yet to put in, is 33 foot-pounds and Loctite all of them. Double check the specs, don't trust me. I've got the electrical connectors connected. I'm going to leave the tie rods disconnected for now because I've got to do lower ball joints. There's play in the lower ball joints and this thing's got to go for a wheel alignment so they're going to call the ball joints. So we might as well do them while we're here. A little bit of oil seepage from these cooler lines. Minor detail, free undercoating. So there's the new lower ball joints installed. The upper ones were okay. Greased the tie rod end. This jam nut was 1.4 inches from the end of the tie rod. And this one was 1.309. So I roughed them in. Obviously, it has to go for a toe adjustment at least, wheel alignment confirmation. And uh, now we're going to let it down and uh, try to flash program this thing, reconnect the battery and hope all that hocus pocus with the alarm system is, uh, you see it's got a new vacuum pump on there. Hmm. That's a fun job too. Well, I got the battery hooked up and the horn's not blowing and the windshield washer's not washing. Open and close and relearn the door windows. Should be service steering system. Well, we're going to see if we can talk to the power steering control module now. Oh, I got a comment from Billy. Perfect video, easy to follow. Thanks, Billy. Where's my mouse? Okay, let's go into the diagnostic suite. And let's clear all codes read by code scan key on engine off I got a clean battery charger set at 13.6 volts showing up as 13.3 here hmm steering angle sensor codes cleared let's see if we can talk to the power steering control module No 
codes present. That's weird. It says it needs to be flash programmed. Well, let's start it and see if it works. So I didn't start it. I figured when in doubt, RTFM. Uh, installing the rack mount, reinstall, connect all electrical, reinstall steering, reconnect the battery, unlock the steering wheel for install for installing the latest OE software and proper calibration procedure, refer to OE service information. It must be updated to the latest OE software and calibration procedure must be performed prior to driving the vehicle. Do not attempt to drive the vehicle without following OE installation procedures. The procedures below is generic reference. Okay, well, I gotta log in to GMSPS and set it up for programming. Well, this is typical. Every time I go to use this stupid laptop, which I use about once every two months, Windows has to do an update. I rebooted it because it was acting slow. Now it's updating. I started the truck and this power steering works. There's no warning lights on, but I must heed this message here. Otherwise, theoretically, the warranty is void if I don't put the latest software in it. So while I'm waiting for my laptop to update, which could be forever, I decided I'd do another network scan after starting this thing. Got a USB circuit problem uh, with the human machine interface. Minor detail. Licensed lamp circuit shorted the battery. Probably corroded sockets or burnt out bulbs. I might check those. But that's it. So I'm wondering if we can check the calibration in the uh, power steering control module and see if it's listed as the latest calibration. Data display, module information. Hmm. I'm going to try and log into GM and see if I can check this calibration to see if it is up to date. Not sure which one of these system module diagnostic address, software module identifier, software base model part number 233-35625. Well, we'll take a screen capture of this. Oh, not this. Uh, and we'll see if we can find any information on the GM website. So I used to have a link on my laptop for calibration files, and I see GM has removed it. Hmm. TIS GM calibrations by the VIN number. Okay, well, let's log into GM. I got to look up my username and password because I don't usually use the Varus to log into GM. I can look up my username. So I'm on the GM SPS website and one of the services they offer that doesn't cost anything is the calibration ID. So I punched in the VIN number and the security code after logging in and changing my password. Where's the power steering control module? No, that's not what I wanted, normal. No calibration data to display. So the only way you know if it's got the most up-to-date software in it is to use uh, service programming. And I'm still waiting for my damn laptop to up finish updating Windows. So I tried it with my, uh, with the Vin uh, engine control module and you can get the main operating system part number 
and the calibration numbers there, but not for the power steering control module. That's unfortunate. Now it does say you can put the part number in. I'm going to try that. So I'm going to try the base model part number 2335625. Two three 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 five six two five. Let's try that. Invalid or unknown part number. What other number did I have? Two double two three three seven three seven oh eight. Two three three seven three seven oh eight. Two three three seven three seven oh eight. Let's try that. Okay, I give up. I wait for my laptop. So a mere two hours for my laptop to update Windows. Now we're logging into AC Delco, and I keep getting an error message. I've already updated the password. An error occurred. Oh, brother. There's always some kind of drama with this shit. So I'm downloading the latest software. Got to do this every time you do service programming unless you do it multiple times in the same day. I don't know what the TUM bundle is. I haven't uh, used service programming for a couple of months now. And that's the problem. If you don't use it on a regular basis, why is my camera doing that? Well, this is one way to increase the billable hours. From the start of this process, it's been almost two and a half hours and I still haven't connected to the vehicle. This is typically what happens when you only access the software once, a once every few months. Now it's telling me I have to reboot the computer and that'll mean restarting and re-logging in. This is just ridiculous. I think this is take three, I think. I can't believe how many times you have to log in and every time they want to send you a verification code and you have to wait for that in your email. Good grief. Guess what? So I'm going to log in to AC Delco TDS one more time. I bet you it's going to have to send me an authentication code again. I think this is their way of trying to discourage the aftermarket from doing this kind of work. Even the internet. I'm, I'm connected via Starlink, so I got a high-speed connection. Okay, so we're going to click on login. I don't know why my camera is doing that. Probably because of the screen resolution. <sighs> Account verification required every damn time now. Seriously? So then I got to open a new page and go to my webmail. I haven't received the mail yet from AC Delco. I keep refreshing the page until it comes up. I'll get it when it comes up. 
I don't know why this thing is doing this. There it is. So we got a copy. And paste it in here. You'd think if you logged in once in the day, they wouldn't require authentication. Especially when you're trying to, now you got to answer to the terms and conditions, of course, or you can't carry on. Of course, I read all that. Service programming. Subscriptions. Add new. We've been to this pot now four freaking times. It's now three o'clock in the afternoon. I started this around noon. If it tells me it's got to reboot the laptop one more time during this software update, I'm going to scream. Well, we'll pick up when something new happens. We got less options now. Had like six of them before. Well, we're finally connected. It's only 3.13 p.m. I'm going to scream if the software in this power steering control module is already up to date. So we're going to go replace and reprogram. And then next. And power steering control module. Come on, focus. My camera doesn't like the screen on the laptop. Power steering control module. Got the key on, got a clean battery charger on it for the last three hours. Take one of my available VIN slots, proceed. Should be able to check to see if the software is up to date before you use a VIN slot. But they don't care. Start programming. New calibration operating to address intermittent loss of steering assist. So there was updating so updated software for it. So the whole programming procedure takes like five minutes. Yet it takes three hours to between Windows updates and computer updates. It's just insane. Let's clear the DTCs. Honestly, that was like five minutes. Well, why did I go view the subscriptions? So we're shutting down service programming. Now we'll connect the snap-on scan tool to it and see if that screen changed at all. 
Well, as far as I can tell, nothing's really changed. I think I have the software in the background. Let's see, base part number, uh, let's see, uh, software module number 2337715. Oops. Oh, that did change. And software identifier 233-73707. That didn't change. 233-411135. So this number changed to 8439-1532 from 233-73715. Zero ninety-one. Hmm. This number, scriber ID, changed. Bunch of nines and a bunch of eights from PC car P cars TN number forty nine. Well, we're gonna take this thing for a road test. Actually, I'm gonna I'm going to do a network code scan. I did change one license plate bulb while I was waiting for all this drama. But the right side socket, the bulb's broken in the socket and I can't get it out. Its socket's melted. Let's do a post scan. See if the service programming system didn't clear some codes. There's probably one code for the license plate light bulb on the right side. And he's got a problem with the human machine interface one of the USB cables or connections is problematic doesn't mention anything else like uh, steering angle relearn but that's part of a wheel alignment hmm interesting Body control module didn't set any codes for that light bulb. I guess I didn't have them on anyways. So let's take this thing for a road test finally. So the steering wheel is off to the right, I'm sorry, left slightly, which may actually set an implausibility code for the steering angle sensor if he drives it on the highway at continuous speed like that because it sees a steering angle that disagrees with the yaw rate sensor. So, obviously it has to go for a, a wheel alignment. It's not pulling in either direction, but the toe is obviously out. Aside from that, steering works fine. No play. Normal assist performance. So after all that, it take, took almost as long to change the steering gear as it did to program it. <laughs> Imagine that. Thanks for watching.